Hello everyone, this is Bob Browner, and this is a recording for a quality improvement curriculum for HPV vaccination that we're launching right now. It's now Lincoln and Nebraska because all of the pediatricians in Lincoln have uh, signed on to the project. We also have pediatricians from several federally qualified health centers across the Nebraska that are also now participating in an increasing number of family medicine offices as well. The whole point of this, of course, is increasing HPV vaccination rates in Nebraska, which are uh, quite a bit below the Healthy People 2020 goals. Uh, for women, boys and girls, we're about 50% of where we should be, and our goal, of course, is to be much higher. The outcome, the timeline of this project, uh, basically we're starting with the quality improvement presentations and uh, baseline data collection in the next couple months. Uh, so right here, uh, we'll be report, repeating this uh, data collection in the summer. Uh, we'll have a second site visit to your clinics if you're interested, and then uh, the project will be finishing in November. There are two things you need to work on uh, after this presentation. First is the, your planning worksheet uh, in which you will list your percentage of pe uh, patients who are vaccinated right now and a goal that you would like to get to. Most clinics start with an, either an increase of 10 to 15 percent or a, a target goal like 65 or 85, 80 percent depending on what you're thinking. If you're at 50 percent, 10 or 15 percent is uh, uh, possible. Uh, and again, we like to get to 80 percent at some point, so it's up to you to decide what your target will be. Uh, you'll start listing a couple interventions you'll try in your clinic. The second thing you'll need to do is come up with a workflow diagram, and we'll discuss a little bit how that's done. Uh, and it's up to you to create this uh, based on the resources in your clinic. Uh, this is uh, similar to another project we've already done a year ago with uh, across Nebraska on colon and breast cancer screening. Uh, this fits in with the 80% by 2018 uh, goal of colorectal cancer screening. We have a lot of clinics that are actually getting pretty close to this in that project. We're basically going to try to repeat that success with this project, uh, also with basically a similar tar target of 80%. Uh, the Healthy People 2020 goal, like I say, is, is 80%. I think it's possible we could hit that early and be one of the first states to get here, uh, or at least in our communities, which would be great. We are working with Department of Health and Human Services, who will follow along with the state immunization system to see uh, how close we are getting to that on a county level uh, for those who are doing it on a community-wide uh, campaign. Uh, their data is still a little messy, so I don't think we're as bad as some of these numbers, but it should get better over time when more people are connected to the registry. But hopefully we'll be able to see that, uh, you know, at least Lancaster County will maybe uh, jump ahead of everybody else. So benefits of the project to you, uh, number one, of course, most importantly, is you'll improve the care of your patients and prevent people from getting cancer. Uh, that's the overriding reason for this. Secondary benefits is you'll get 30 hours of CME credit and your part four maintenance of, maintenance of board certification for physicians. You'll see how you compare to your uh, compares across the, the community and potentially the state, which I think is helpful uh, to know kind of how where your quality fits with everybody else. You'll also develop some experience with quality improvement projects that are likely to be required by future insurance contracts, both in the commercial sphere and also Medicaid managed care. And of course, uh, another thing is the style points. If your community has the best vaccination rates, it's kind of cool to be best in the state. So the project, we use a, we have to use a quality improvement curriculum, and I use a, a framework called DEMAIC. DEMAIC stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, and Control when it's used in the manufacturing uh, and IT worlds. Uh, for healthcare, I use Communicate because I think that's actually the, the bigger barrier. barrier. Plus, patients uh, are all unique, and you can't control them, but you can certainly communicate better with them. Uh, this framework has been used in other areas of healthcare. We used it in our other cancer screening projects, and it's been working for years. Here's an example from a German hospital system that used to make as part of their quality improvement framework, and they use what I sometimes call the ultimate quality measure, which is dead, not dead. And it worked for several uh, projects over several years, and so uh, I think uh, this has certainly a pretty good uh, solid evidence that this works within healthcare. So the first definition, so D is define, you define what your definition of quality is, and for us it's going to be initial HPV vaccination rate for uh, 11 to 12 year olds, and then a second vaccination rate for 13 to 60 year olds when hopefully this has been completed. We're going to probably do a seasonal approach in most clinics, uh, so if we're launching February to August, that's the perfect time to take advantage of the seventh grade physicals. In Lincoln, we're going to try to push through uh, some marketing through our school system so that when the school nurses put out information for the seventh grade physical, they also remind them to get HPV vaccination. Uh, and then later on, after those first round of physicals are done, start developing that six-month recall to get kids back in to get vaccinated to complete their vaccination series. That's when, uh, so you'll start after this. First thing is define. So this is how you'll define for that DMAIC framework what your quality is and also what your targets. Then you'll start making your plan. <clears throat> right now, as many of you probably know, that there's been a change in the vaccination schedule, which is a uh, 
one of the things we're going to be taking advantage of. Uh, one of the you know, the reasons we can probably encourage more people to get vaccinated now is that they get vaccinated before 15 years of age. It's only two doses instead of three. So that'll hopefully prevent <clears throat> some parents who like to delay the vaccination because they don't think their ch child's going to have sex for a while. Uh, we know that uh, that's probably not the best approach, but I think this gives us one more tool uh, to try and convince people to vaccinate early rather than waiting. Second, uh, after define, is measure, analyze, and improve. So once you've measured, it's often good to look at your numbers, uh, sometimes comparing peers uh, in, the, in your clinic against each other to see who's doing better, who's not. Uh, you don't want to get to a blame and shame type thing. You want to find out if somebody's doing well, why are they doing well? And then look at how, why are these people not getting vaccinated and look at things that you could potentially do. So analyze why they're not getting vaccinated. Uh, what things could we do? Could we, for example, generate a list of patients who are missing and find a way to get them back in? Uh, who would be tracking them down in your clinic? Would it be a care coordinator or someone from your front desk, one of your nurses? Uh, what processes could be changed in your clinic? Can you have reminder systems alerts uh, so that uh, you have an, a passive way to remind you that uh, patients need vaccinated? Can it be a standing part of rooming the patient to always check vaccinations? Uh, also, there are some uh, videos we can hook you up with that actually talk to you about how to pitch it to patients because some people don't pitch it very well. One of the things we find out in getting patients to change their behavior, sometimes it's as much how you say it as what you say. Uh, going into finding out why you've not been vaccinated, this is a good article from Family Practice Management I could send to you if you're interested. Essentially, they went through and found out why people were not getting vaccinated, and they found out the number of things. One is that those patients weren't active patients anymore, and so those patients probably should have been deactivated. Sometimes people didn't show up, but they still should receive a reminder when they no-show. Sometimes they actually came in, but we just missed the opportunity. And so kind of finding out why kid people are not getting vaccinated in your clinic is one of the help ways to help solve the problem. And then last, communicate. Uh, there's good to have open discussion. Uh, lack of communication is rampant within medical offices. I usually jokingly say that uh, one of the biggest frustrations of the doctor just meeting on Tuesday night, a decision gets made, but then nobody disseminates it on Wednesday, and by Thursday, everybody's mad because nothing happened. Another thing to do is make this a positive competition. Uh, rank and spank uh, approaches often are very ineffective. Uh, doctors and nurses can be very passive aggressive. Uh, so don't take that approach. Make it a team approach. Make it positive, and you'll do much better. Uh, one way we uh, sometimes will do is actually break down results by provider. The important thing is not to focus on why somebody isn't up to snuff and yell at them, but find out why these people are doing better. Is it because they have a better workflow or they, they have better training around the EHR? Do they literally have a better sales pitch uh, when they sell it to their patients? Uh, usually focusing on who's doing best is more productive than focusing on who's doing it worst. Uh, sometimes though you might find out, for example, in this section that somebody's just not putting the vaccination in the right part. Uh, maybe they just don't have the same check-in process that these people do. Those things can be translated across the clinic. Uh, there's a saying that the future is here yet, it's just not evenly distributed. And so sometimes that's why the communication and sharing these results can be so important. Some clinics will, stay, will start with people not being specifically identified in first, but once there's more trust uh, in the process, then start adding who and who the actual providers are. Second, the other thing required is you're going to have to come up with a workflow diagram. Uh, one way that people will create a workflow diagram is actually just starting with sticky notes on a wall. This is a clinic I worked with a few years ago where they basically just used this and took a picture of it. That actually will work for the curriculum. However, I would strongly encourage you to turn it into a written document. Uh, the reason why it's good to have it as a written document is then you can edit it. Uh, second is you can pass it around the clinic so everybody's on the same page. Uh, like I said before, the problem where a decision is made on Tuesday night and then nothing happens is because people don't communicate the decision to everybody around the clinic. And by putting what your plan is into a workflow diagram, it's going to be a lot easier to explain to your, to your uh, practice how things are going to be different, what you're going to be changing. Uh, one of my favorite examples, this is from our cancer screening project. Uh, this is one of our clinics in one picture basically summarize their whole year's worth of work. Uh, they have uh, their first baseline numbers here. Uh, they had their workflow diagrams tacked on the wall here. They had what they did midway through and their final numbers circled who did the best to highlight who had the best ideas, put their final numbers here and some other sh changes they were going to be making. So here in one picture you can see how one clinic did a great job. Uh, this physician here actually became a believer in the project because her own her own father was caught by one of the other providers in the clinic and they found a precancerous lesion in his colonoscopy. So she's uh, very much a believer in the project now. 
Um, some people say, well, can you just give me the magic workflow diagram? And I, the answer is no, and there's two reasons for this. One is I don't know the makeup of your clinic. Uh, every clinic has different resources, personnel. Uh, some interventions are going to work in one clinic but not another. Also, the evidence shows that if a clinic creates their own workflow diagram, they own it and they do a much better job. So you'll p pick your potential interventions. Is it going to be team huddles, provider feedback, standing orders, a reminder system and alerts within your EHR? Uh, are you going to do a better job of health promotion in your clinic? How you how you encourage people to give HPV vaccinations? Like I, again, there's a video out of Minnesota we can sh have you show to your uh, nursing staff that'll help them pitch it better. Uh, also, even working with other organizations. So, for example, in Lincoln, we're probably going to work with Lincoln Public Schools and the Cancer Society to try and do some public marketing campaigns at the same time. We're trying to do this within our clinics. After this, of course, you now know what, hopefully, you know your clinic better than anybody else. You'll pick what staff is going to do which interventions, and you'll create your own workflow diagram out of all these possibilities. Uh, and then you'll log on at the end, um, and usually you'll need to do that to get your CME and your Part 4 Maintenance Certification credit. Uh, a couple lessons learned from last year's projects, and I've been doing this for uh, about 12 years now. Uh, this was a project on pneumonia vaccinations in our elderly patients in the residency program I used to work at. What you'll notice here is that our numbers are horrible when we started, uh, but they aren't real numbers, though. We weren't 10 and 20 percent vaccinated. Our numbers were a lot better. The reason is just that we look so bad is because all the information, the paper charts back here, didn't get transferred over, and so this is a false measure of our quality of our clinic. Uh, we then went and pulled those paper charts, pulled the uh, nursing home records, things like that, and actually got everybody documented properly, found out our real number wasn't too bad. It was 57%. Not horrible, but also not great. Then we put things into place like standing orders, reminder systems, uh, made a team competition between sections of our clinic, and we rapidly got up to 75-80%, which was far higher than national averages at the time, and this was within a residency program in a very challenging population. So if you do it right, you can make a big difference in any uh, population. Uh, these are results from all the clinics that were uh, part of the cancer screening project last year. Uh, 27 clinics, a lot of them just like we did, started with horrible data, so nobody was that bad, thankfully. Uh, as they started cleaning things up and getting things uh, right and putting things into place, they got much better. This clinic here actually is still better than that. They still have a problem with their data and their EHR. They've done some individual follow-ups. Their real numbers are 62 to 72 percent. Uh, but, you know, some of the, a lot of these clinics made progress. Uh, of the 27 clinics, uh, 23 participated in the CME portion. The ones who did not are the yellow ones, and so they did not make a big difference when they didn't have a plan and they didn't meet like we did. Uh, only one of them even made a significant improvement, and several made almost none or even fell back a little bit. Almost every clinic that actively participated did much better with their cancer screening results. A couple other lessons learned. Uh, this comes from uh, Mary Ellen Benzik in Michigan, who's a physician that's worked with quality, with uh, all of their most of their PCMH projects. Uh, we had her in Lincoln uh, about two years ago for a, a talk, and I asked her at the end. I said, "Mary Beth, what's the difference between uh, clinics that do it well and do it not and don't do it well?" She said, "It wasn't systems. It wasn't their EHR. It really boiled down into four things. Number one is physician leadership is key." Uh, the lead physician needs to be identified and present and involved, but on the same token, they often are not the ones getting it done. They need to delegate to an assistant, a care coordinator, a nursing coordinator, somebody like that who actually gets the project done. And so that team of both a lead physician and, and someone they can delegate to. The second is measure and keep it simple. So don't do 20 things at once. Take a couple things, do them well, then move on to the next thing. Third is the whole team needs to be involved. This can't be a physician-only project. It can't be a nurse-only project. You need to get the front desk, back office, office manager, everybody involved for the project. And that's, again, the communications between an office is key to doing this well. Uh, although I would say, actually, in something like a vaccination project, the nurses are probably the best uh, intervention, uh, even more so than the physicians if the nurses get it right. Um, and lastly, the team needs planning time. You guys need to get together as a group and talk about these projects. Oftentimes, that's one of the most neglected things in a well-run clinic is have staff as an effective staff meeting to talk about how do we improve care with our patients. If you do that, you'll do a much better job. So to summarize, uh, the curriculum starts with defining. Uh, you'll measure, analyze what you can do, improve, and then communicate your results. And it's an iterative, pro iterative process, and you'll go through at least three cycles this year and hopefully show some dramatic improvements. Uh, later on, if you're interested, we'll come back to do other projects. I have a, a talk on staffing for effective quality improvement, and a lot of the reasons some clinics don't do this right is they're not effectively staffed. Uh, we'll also have another follow-up if you're interested about how to, and of course, just as importantly, how not to use quality data. So that's the curriculum. I'll either be talking with you at your clinics or... Uh, 
uh, you'll be watching this soon. Uh, let me know if you, have any, if you have any questions. My email is down below. Thanks.